imagine it. You're sitting up there on your horse and he's starting to get a little bit jumpy. And let's be honest, so are you. There's something about riding a horse that is beginning to feel nervous that can be, you know, a little off-putting for many riders. And what I want to talk about today is how you can begin to build your confidence in this situation so as you can help yourself and also help your horse as well. Okay, let's dive in. Hey there and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach and I work with riders from all over the world to help them to just improve their skills, their knowledge, their riding and also help their horse improve along the way as well. Okay, confidence. Confidence is one thing and confidence is something I dealt with a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. I was talking specifically about if you are feeling any fear, okay? But confidence when you're on a horse that's not feeling all that confident is quite another, okay? And there can be this almost situation where you both begin to I don't know, feed off each other's nerves and it's not a nice place to be. And I think that for many of us, if we have a horse or we know of a horse or we ride a horse who tends to get a little bit nervous, it can actually in the long run make us really doubt our abilities. Um, And I think that it is something that we can actually improve. We can improve your confidence in yourself and in your own abilities to handle the situation. However, you can also improve your horse's confidence in you, which will definitely help your horse when he does begin to feel those, to feel the nerves a flutter, okay? He's going to be able to say, hold on, it's okay. I'm, I'm with her and she knows what to do and we're safe together. Now, it does take a lot of time and a lot of patience, okay? Really important. And it can often be a long road, but I do think it's a road that is worth traveling because In my experience, very often those horses, the ones that started off being a little bit of a challenge, okay, the ones that started off being a bit jumpy and a bit nervous actually end up really and truly becoming the horse that can almost like define certain periods of your life because you can build such a strong bond with those horses. But again, you have to be committed and you have to be in it for the long run. So assuming that you are, I want to give you a couple of really practical things that you can begin doing today to help you and your horse build your confidence. And this is especially if your horse is a little bit nervy, okay? Right, first and foremost, you're going to find your comfort zone and you're going to stay there. (laughs) I know loads of people, they say, no, you must just do it and you have to go for it and you have to, you know, push yourself out of your comfort zone. That can be great advice in certain situations. However, in this particular situation, I'm going to suggest don't do that, okay? I think that the best thing you can do is to find a place where you are both happy, okay? Like, really, you you want to find it. And then you want to kind of find the place where you're just at the edge. You're, You're getting very close to the boundary with that. But you are actually going to stay there. So you're still in your comfort zone, but you know you're kind of, you're just, you're brushing up against the part where it begins to feel slightly more uncomfortable, okay? But initially, you're going to stay in the comfort zone. You're not even going to worry about getting out there. And what you're going to focus on doing is almost like rewiring both your thoughts, your actions, and your habits, okay? Like you're going to start thinking about, hold on, what am I doing? What am I thinking? What's like the predominant thought going on here? Okay, can I maybe think of something different or something that's going to, I don't know, serve me more? Or what am I doing? What's my body doing? Like am I, every time I feel anxious and nervous, am I tending to like curl up, you know, when riders do this, they remind me of hamsters. They're kind of, they, I don't know. It's like they, you know what a hamster looks like when he curls up. They kind of look like that. Okay. Um, and of course that is not helpful. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's helpful in any situation. Okay. Um, the other thing that can happen with riders is as soon as they begin to feel anxiety or nerves, they actually become a little bit more aggressive, almost like as this way to hide or to mask their doubts, okay? 
And then you've more writers who'd actually just freeze. And in the freezing, they like just don't do anything. They just allow everything to literally happen to them. They become like completely passive. They become passengers in the whole situation. Now, you can see that any of those reactions, whether you're going to be the hamster or you're going to maybe try and like mask it and act your way through it by acting aggressive, or if you just freeze, like, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. Okay. None of those situations or none of those reactions are actually going to help the situation at all. Okay. It's not going to help you and it's not going to help your horse. Okay. When you're inside of your comfort zone, those things won't happen. And that's why I want you to stay in the comfort zone for as long as it takes for your more relaxed way of riding. So the habits that you have when you're feeling relaxed and when you're feeling comfortable, they are the ones that are going to become dominant. Remember, if you've spent any length of time out of your comfort zone, those bad habits, we'll call them, they may be more dominant now. And we have to try and change that. We have to try and work through that. So I think that's really, really important. Okay. Um, you want to work where you and your horse are comfortable. Okay. Key to the kingdom. Start there. Okay. When you're there, you can then begin working on getting the basics onto autopilot. Okay. So what you want here with the basics is that you want to kind of not have to think about having to keep your heels down. If you can only keep your heels down by thinking about keeping your heels down, well, as soon as you get distracted from that thought, what's going to happen? Your heels are going to come up. And like, we don't want that happening when the horse is busy doubting everything, okay? You want your heels to be firmly down in that situation, and you want to make sure that at that point, you can actually focus on your horse and what's happening, not having to keep your heels down, okay? So use the time in the comfort zone to to get the heels down because I tell you now, anything that you're constantly have to think about in order to get done, as soon as pressure is applied and pressure being that you're feeling a little bit of discomfort in a situation, um, that it's going to fly out the window and you're going to revert back to whatever it is that you would normally do when you're not thinking about it. So it's really, really important to think about that, okay? Um, you want to like get the essentials to simply just happen, okay? Like they happen on their own. So like, for example, if I'm in a tricky situation with a horse and the horse is starting to get jumpy and nervous, my heels automatically go down by themselves. Well, they're always down, but what I mean is like, they even more so do. I've trained myself. There's a response that happens, okay? And I don't have to think about that then. I can actually think about responding in a way that's going to best serve the situation. And that's where I want you to get to as well, okay? Um, you don't want to find yourself in a tricky situation and then having to go through a checklist in your head of all the essentials to remember. That's not going to work. You want to find yourself when your horse is feeling nervous that you can actually work on just regaining the balance for you and your horse and kind of getting the ride back on track, okay? And you're not going to be able to do that if you have to keep fixing the basics first. So get them onto autopilot, make it your mission and do it in a place that you feel comfortable. You and your horse feel comfortable. Okay. From there then, once you've got all that done, so you and your horse, you've established the comfort zone, you've established this kind of habit of being comfortable and relaxed, you've established the basics on autopilot, then you can begin to start testing yourself and you can also test your horse, okay? So I think that it can be really fun to think about if this happens, then I will do this, okay? And you begin to actually create these responses in your head as opposed to having just these reactions happen on autopilot that maybe are not going to serve you at all, okay? So what you could do is you could begin to maybe invite some potentially uncomfortable things into your comfort zone. Um, When I do this, I often think of it from the horse's perspective, okay? Like what items, what individual things or what circumstances or situations would cause my horse to question the situation a little bit, okay, or to question himself a little bit, okay? Um, You want to like really and truly get 
um, really clear on this, like what, what can I use now that would actually help me and my horse uh, to set up a little test that we would have to work through, okay? And remember, the goal here is to build your confidence when riding the nervous horse. So what's interesting here is that you can then, because you've got these planned responses, you can then get to kind of almost practice them and almost put them onto autopilot while in a place where you're still feeling comfortable. But remember, it's your horse that's kind of, his nerves are being tested a little bit. You're feeling good, okay? You know it's all under control, but your horse is feeling a little bit like, oh, I don't know so much. And you're now getting to, to kind of practice all this, okay? You want to almost like think about shifting the energy for both yourself and your horse um, from being anxious. Anxious is like a, anxious is, Anxious kind of causes a lot of heavy feelings, even just the word, doesn't it? When we start talking about being anxious or experiencing anxiety, it can feel really heavy. And when we can start shifting that to maybe nervous, okay? Nervous is, it can go either way. You can be nervous in a positive way, or you could be nervous in a negative way, but you could choose it to be a positive way. And if you're nervous in a positive way, okay, if you're, oh, I feel a little bit nervous about this, but it's kind of almost like excitement. I think excitement is a big jump when you're riding a nervous horse, but where you could jump to would be maybe curious, okay? Oh, I'm curious to see what happens here. And by doing that, you can now begin to kind of shift that energy a little bit, okay? Now, I would only introduce things that you feel comfortable with, okay? Now, this is really important. Remember, the aim is that you can remain comfortable, but your horse is going to be experiencing the mild discomfort, the mild nerves, okay? Because that is going to allow you both to actually begin to, if you want building confidence in yourself and in each other as well, okay? So once you get to do this and you kind of feel, yep, this is good, we're doing well, and me and my horse are feeling much better now, now you can begin actually thinking about venturing outside of the comfort zone, okay? And this is where we're going to ask you to get a little bit uncomfortable. So I think that before you do that, it's really important that you control everything that you possibly can, okay? So you want to think about starting kind of of what maybe taking a walk yourself and pretending you're your horse and looking at everything and being like hmm okay how's he going to respond to that what's he going to do to that how would he feel about that and then removing anything that you can remove that potentially might show up as an issue okay I know we're going out of the comfort zone but we also want to make this a good experience okay so remove any of the questionable things that you might meet along your way and then also think about the time of day the vicinity the weather feeding times energy levels you know all the fun things and make sure that you're trying to you're trying to set up a situation, okay, where for the most part, you've removed many of the challenges that might show up and that you and your horse can almost like get to experience working together through the nerves and getting actual positive results, okay? Even if you do both feel a little challenged and nervous, which is how you're going to feel, we want you to feel that way, but we want to do it from this very controlled place, Okay, um, so that's important. And then while you're doing all this, you have to keep checking your mindset, okay? I think that it's really important to increase your self-awareness. Like, what do you believe to be true about each situation? And is it really true? So, what, you know, a good way to test, is that really true? Meaning that if you gathered like a thousand random people and asked them, is this true, this situation? They would all say, yes, 100%, it's true, okay? Um, If anybody could question it or if anybody could, um, you know, kind of pull strings out of it and kind of pull threads and let the whole thing unwind, then it's not really true. And I would also then start to consider where could I begin to tweak or change the story, okay? So if you're continuing to tell yourself the same story all the time about feeling nervous when you're on your nervous Nelly of a horse, well, 
you're just going to produce the same results over and over and over again, okay? You need to change the story in order for things to begin working, okay? You know, becoming more confident working with a horse who, you know, is likely to spook or to spin or whatever, okay? It's going to take time. It's not going to be easy and it's going to take like a lot of commitment from you. But you can start doing that today by changing the mindset, even by just saying... Yes, my horse is quite nervous at times. However, we're working on developing confidence. Here you go. It's the same story. You're not lying. You're just changing how you're saying it to yourself. That's all. But in doing so, you will begin to really and truly shift your emotions regarding it as well, which is really important. And as I said at the very beginning, I, in my experience, and I've seen this, well, I've experienced this myself, but I've also seen it with other people as well. Very often these horses are actually the ones that really and truly become like your, you know, like the horse of a lifetime type horses. So it is well worth persevering with. I I really do believe that. But I do think that you have to be committed and you have to give it the necessary investment of time and energy and focus in order to make it happen and I just wish you all the best with it if that's what you're struggling with good luck with it I hope that it works out well for you and your horse if you have experiences on this I'd love to hear from you what you can do is you can pop on over to the Facebook group and maybe you can let us know in there you can find that over at stridesforsuccess.com forward slash group okay I'm going to go have a lovely day keep well and I'll chat to you soon be good bye